Well, hi there, and happy anniversary. Yes, Auckland anniversary, long weekend, uh, enjoying that. You probably, uh, because of that, no one's even watching this morning. You're all at the beach, uh, but it's great, isn't it, to have a, uh, an extra day off. And uh, it's also great that we can watch this anytime through the week. So, yes, well, another week of change and predictions. Yeah, the big change is that we're now at traffic light red. I'm sure you've all caught up with that. Uh, and again, it has a big impact on our gatherings, um, and which we'll talk about uh, shortly. But it's so important in this time... Uh, to be connected, isn't it? Um, now more than ever. Um, so if you're new to Coast Vineyard Church, fill in a contact form on the website and we can be new friends and uh, we can keep you up to date with Coast Vineyard Life. Or if you'd like to, I'd love to get a phone call. You know, give us a call and say hi. We'd love to, um, to be able to do that. Uh, if you're looking for more about Coast Vineyard Life, you can find us on social media, YouTube, uh, no uh, worries there in finding us in all sorts of places. But yes, the big prediction is that in February, we are likely to get up to 80,000 COVID cases a day as the Omicron variant gets loose. That's what they're saying. I mean, this is going to mean life will be so different for us all very, very soon. And uh, as I said, it's more important than ever to be connected with others. Um, because a number of us are going to get sick, which means that we, we have to stay home and our families our households have to stay home uh, tricky times so anyway coast vineyard we're going to play our part in limiting covid transmission uh, smaller gatherings keeping everyone uh, well and ensuring the sick or isolated are uh, cared for the isolating are cared for um, anyway we're going to send out some helpful guides to being prepared before you get sick there are some things that it's helpful to have in your house Get ready just in case that um, you have to um, stay there for a few days. We're also going to be setting up a page on our website. We had this uh, earlier on in the early days of COVID, which was like you could tick on a box saying, I can help if people need help or I need help uh, and uh, get things going there. Keep an eye for that. All right, red light church update. What are Sunday gatherings going to look like? It's a big question. I know. Well, we're going to have a number of gatherings in homes uh, with you know options within that of uh, worship, message, stuff for kids, stuff for youth. You know, obviously hang time. You could do food together if that's uh, how you like to do that. But more details coming soon as we organise this big change. But. Uh, that's the plan. And thank you so much for all of those who said on our survey that you would be willing to host uh, a Sunday morning um, church in your home. Over 40 of you uh, that did that. Love your hearts. That's just so cool. All right, midweek groups are going to be starting up in February uh, as well as on Sundays. A uh, new group starting up, which is called In Formation, meeting monthly, focusing on spiritual growth and formation check out the details coming soon on the website if that sounds like you uh, i've been hoping that many of you will be up for that uh, all right kids and youth kicking off in february with various online stuff as well as some in-person stuff uh, watch out for that a uh, little update for you uh, staff andrew our operations manager uh, finished uh, just this friday just gone he's been offered an exciting new role in a ministry leading a ministry organization uh, in Auckland, uh, we are praying God's very richest for him in that new season. And we're going to give you some more updates on staff changes next week. I know you'll be on the edge of your seat waiting to uh, hear that. All right. I um, just want to say thank you to all those who contributed to the family whose house burnt down in Ottawa uh, a few weeks back. Uh, it was nice to be able to you know, provide a financial gift to them, be generous to them. Uh, and if anyone, just on the whole thing of giving, if there are any of you who call Coast Vineyard home, like if you don't already, please consider becoming a regular supporter to enable Coast Vineyard to, to not only survive, but thrive in this COVID season. There's so much life-changing activity and ministry and life that, uh, that happens uh, that can only happen because of the resources that allow it. And some of you, I know you're watching from afar. Um, throw this out to you would you consider sewing in to coast vineyard church also if you're finding 
um, Sundays uh, and all that we do helpful would you know would you consider that also you can easily give through our website uh, to church ministries as well as as well as sewing into our compassion ministries where we are able to help people in very difficult times um, as we uh, encounter them in you know in our lives all right i am now going to hand over to annalise phipps she is awesome we love you annalise and your family amazing family and i know that you will be encouraged by her message to us today all right Good morning, Coast Vineyard. It's great to be with you this morning. My name's Annalise, and I'm going to be sharing with you a encouragement um, that I feel that the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. You might find it encouraging personally, um, but also an encouragement for us as a Fano, as a group of believers here on the coast. So, uh, toward the end of last year, I felt God put on my heart uh, the phrase to stay the course. Uh, I've actually never used this term myself, to stay the course, um, but its origins are thought to be nautical. And we use it now uh, when we want to express to, you know, stick to something to the end, uh, despite challenges, to pursue a difficult dis um, task, despite, you know, difficulties along the way. Um, we can use words such as to press on, or to persevere, or to endure. Um, and actually, these words kind of remind us a bit of what we read in some of Paul's uh, books in the New Testament. So, to stay the course, what does this mean for us here at Coast Vineyard? What does it mean for you in the season that you're in? I feel the Lord saying, firstly, that to stay the course is to fix our eyes on Him, to fix our eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 1, verse 2 encourages us, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. To stay the course is to fix our eyes on him, throwing off anything that can distract us. And there is a lot vying for our attention. I love how Paul writes it in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. For my determined purpose is to know him. For my determined purpose is to know him. The Lord is encouraging us, reminding us that the most important thing that our whole reason for following him is to know him. Knowing him is staying the course. For my determined purpose is to know him. Paul goes on, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. This is in the Amplified Version. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. And that I may, in the same way, come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers. And that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit, into his likeness, even to his death. I mean, it's a pretty hefty verse, and obviously from the Amplified Version, it really, you know, expands it a lot. Uh, but what a beautiful reminder of the purity of faith which Jesus calls us to. To stay the course for us is to pursue knowing him more deeply and more intimately, and in doing so, to be transformed by him. Paul continues in Philippians 3, verse 12, and this is from the NIV, so a bit shorter. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. 
Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What again, a beautiful reminder of the purity of our faith. I feel the Lord encouraging us to let go, to throw off what easily entangles or distracts us, no matter how good they might seem. If an activity or a buzz or an interest we have is taking us from knowing Christ deeper and more intimately, then maybe it's time to reevaluate and let go. Some things might have been positive and wholesome and fruitful in past seasons, and some things might be positive and fruitful for others in their season. But maybe it's time for us to reevaluate some things if they are not being fruitful for us now. Um, and if they're distracting us from staying the course, from knowing Jesus. The most important thing, the reason for us to stay the course is Jesus, our beautiful and wonderful Saviour. To love Him with all our heart and mind and strength, to know Him, to be transformed by Him. This is the purpose of our journey, to know Him, to pursue him, to cling to him, is to stay the course. So be encouraged. I don't know about you, but words such as pressing on and enduring and persevering might not seem particularly edifying right now, maybe a bit more tiring. Um, on the back of two years of life in a pandemic and looking down at a year, another year in a pandemic, um, you know, words such as enduring, it's like, I have done enough enduring and pressing on for the last two years and I'd quite like to have a break. Um, so maybe you might kind of relate to that feeling that I have as well. Um, but you know, we know that in Jesus, his invitation to us and walking with him and walking toward him is very different to the ways of the world. Um, and he urges us to actually avoid striving but rather to let go. Following Jesus looks a little bit different to an actual endurance race. Uh, and it is easy to draw those conclusions. You know, my husband and I watched um, snippets of the Auckland Marathon last weekend, and we were for about an hour or so sitting near the 30K mark. So a marathon's 42Ks, so they're kind of near their end, but they've still got 12K to go. And um, it's pretty inspiring seeing these athletes, you know, the elite athletes who are gunning for their placements. Um, they are fiercely focused and s the speed on them is incredible. I couldn't run that fast after 1K, let alone a 30. Um, so inspiring stuff. And then you've got, you know, a little bit later, the, the rest of the people who maybe have been working toward it for a while and probably just have that bucket list of I want to run a marathon once in my life, um, you know, or hobby runners. Some of these people look to be really struggling. Um, but you could tell that despite what was going on, they were determined to reach the end. And I guess I was just reflecting on, you know, the state of some of these runners and I wonder if we could, if Jesus is extending that invitation to us that walking toward Jesus and walking with Jesus, we don't need to be bedraggled and, and suffering um, to the point of, you know, not being able to continue on. But, um, but Jesus, he, he offers us a new way that actually um, persevering and enduring in Jesus looks like surrender to him and that we don't need to do it all in our own strength, but rather we can rely on and pull from the strength of Christ. Um, so following Christ requires our surrender, our response, not our striving. And this is what pressing on looks like in the kingdom of God. It's a continual letting go, and it's a continual trusting him to be transformed by him. This brings me to my second point, which I feel 
God wants to encourage us with. That to stay the course is to stay humble and responsive. Our journey with and toward Jesus does not require our striving, as I said, but rather our response and our humility. He has not called us to pursue him, to stay the course in brute ignorance or arrogance with blinkers on or bulldozing people or anything that's in our way, but rather Jesus invites us to stay his course in a gentle and humble surrender to him, being responsive to him. To continue the nautical metaphor, I think of a yacht. For a yacht to have a successful journey, it must be responsive to the environment around it. A yacht might need to make some adjustments. Sure, a sailor may have their you know, route that they wish to follow. Um, you can tell I'm a seasoned sailor. Um, but there, are, you know, there might be a weather front which they might have to navigate around, or there might be boat malfunctions, or there might be a fellow sailor in distress that you wish to respond to. Uh, for, a, for a sail to be a successful journey, um, a sailor must be responsive. It must be alert and watchful. And in the same way, I feel that Christ is inviting us to be watchful and alert and responsive to the environment about us, around us. Not seeking our own benefit, but considering others. Love being our core value. Listening to where he's leading. And of course, a yacht must be responsive to the wind, which powers it forward. And the wind is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is encouraging us to keep our sails as such open in response to his movement in our life. Where are you leading me in this season, Lord? He is calling us to be gentle and humble in our surrender to him. Responsive, watchful, alert. We can trust that he will carry us on the course set out for us when we respond to him. Let us be responsive to the move of the Spirit in our lives and humble fellowship with the Spirit of God, trusting that he who began a good work in us will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. Not looking to the left or the right, not comparing ourselves to the journeys of others, but trusting in the work of the Spirit within us personally. I'm so thankful that the endurance required to, to follow Jesus, that to stay the course, to walk with him and toward him, we don't need to do it in our own strength, but rather our surrender to the Spirit of God in our lives will keep us on the course. So Coast Vineyard, a simple encouragement for you today and for all of us to stay the course, to fix our eyes on Jesus, to remain responsive to him and humble to him, ready for maybe some surprises, but always knowing that he is carrying us and he is leading us forward. Some questions to ponder and reflect on this word will come up soon and you might like to sit with them and um, see maybe what God might be saying to you further personally and this encouragement for you. But in the meantime, I'll leave you with this prayer. I fix my eyes on Jesus, my author, my finisher, and my perfecter, he who called my name and calls me forward. I let go of what lays behind, and I press on toward what is ahead, Jesus. My determined purpose is that I may know you. I know the power of your resurrection. It flows through me, through creation, and to eternity. I let go of what easily entangles, avert my heart from distractions. I fix my eyes on Jesus. He is calling me upward and onward. I embrace those around me. I call them too. Come to the Father. He is truth. So be blessed, Coast Vineyard. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend 
and blessings on you in your 2022. And may you know the Lord more deeply and more intimately. See you later.